Imagine walking side by side with a woolly mammoth or gazing upon a dodo bird in its full glory. Sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? Now delve into a world where this might not be just fiction, but a potential future. A world where the Tasmanian tiger could once again stalk the wilderness or the majestic passenger pigeon could fill the skies. Intrigued? You should be. But what if I told you this could become a reality? Welcome to the fascinating world of cloning extinct animals. Before we dive into the depths of cloning extinct species, let's unpack the science of cloning itself. Think of cloning as creating a genetic photocopy, a living Xerox, if you will, of an existing organism. The process begins with the extraction of DNA, the blueprint of life from the organism we want to clone. This DNA contains all the information necessary to create a replica of the original organism. Imagine the DNA as the recipe for a cake, dictating the exact ingredients and steps required to recreate that same delicious treat. Just as you might copy this recipe to bake the same cake again, scientists replicate the DNA to create a new organism with the same genetic makeup. Once the DNA is replicated, it's time for the next step, implantation. This is where our surrogate mother comes into play. Think of her as a baking oven ready to cook up our copied cake recipe. The replicated DNA is introduced into an egg cell of the surrogate mother, which then grows and develops into a new organism, a clone of the original. While this might sound like a simple cut and paste job, the process is incredibly intricate and requires precise scientific techniques. And remember, the clone is not an exact copy. Just as two cakes baked from the same recipe might still differ slightly, so too might the clone differ from the original due to environmental factors and conditions during development. So that's the basic idea behind cloning, but how does this work when the animal in question is extinct? Cloning extinct animals is a bit more complex than cloning living ones. Why? Because we're dealing with ancient DNA. And ancient DNA, my friends, is a whole different ball game. It's often fragmented, degraded and contaminated, which makes it incredibly difficult to work with. Imagine trying to piece together a puzzle, but the pieces are torn, faded and some are even missing. That's the kind of challenge we're talking about here. But it's not just about the DNA. We also need preserved specimens, and those are not easy to come by either. Even if we do find a preserved specimen, extracting viable DNA is like finding a needle in a haystack. And let's not forget about finding a suitable surrogate mother. This is crucial because the surrogate mother has to be closely related to the extinct species. But here's the thing, despite these complexities, scientists aren't backing down, they're rolling up their sleeves, diving headfirst into the unknown and making some truly remarkable strides. They're developing new techniques, advancing technology and pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible. So, while the idea of cloning extinct animals may seem like something straight out of a science fiction novel, it's becoming more and more plausible. Despite the challenges, scientists are making incredible strides in this field. The possibility of cloning extinct animals might not be as far-fetched as it seems, as... So what does the future hold for cloning extinct animals? As we gaze into the crystal ball of science, the prospects are as tantalizing as they are complex. Imagine a world where the woolly mammoth once again roams the Arctic tundra, or where the dodo waddles across the landscape. But beyond the spectacle, there are substantial potential benefits to cloning extinct animals. Bringing back extinct species could help restore damaged ecosystems. For instance, if we could reintroduce the passenger pigeon, its once massive flocks might help regenerate the forests they once inhabited. On the downside, we must also consider the potential risks. Could these resurrected species outcompete or disrupt current ecosystems? And what about the potential for disease transmission? We also cannot overlook the ethical considerations. Is it right to bring a creature back into a world that has moved on from its existence? Would it be fair to the animal itself? Or would it merely exist as a novelty, a spectacle for our curiosity? Despite these questions, the potential to clone extinct animals is a testament to the incredible advancements in science. It reminds us of our power 
our responsibility and the delicate balance of life on our planet. Cloning extinct animals is a fascinating field that blurs the line between science fiction and reality. As we continue to push the boundaries of science, who knows what extinct creature we might see roaming the Earth once again.